Hey everyone, happy Monday. Thanks for joining me for a craft night with friends. Uh, my name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish where we make cute embroidery kits for beginners. And I'm here every weeknight, Monday through Friday at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. Uh, so we did a little bit of a catch up over the weekend. On Saturday, we had a little mini marathon of a couple hours of stitching and we finished our sunflower embroidery. And I also finished uh, the tulip. <laughs> the tulip rug. So I'll show you guys both of those a little bit more closely. Uh, just because it's fun finishing projects. We're getting them checked off the list. And then tonight we will be uh, working on the Splendid Sampler to quilt along a little bit more. We have that lots of hexy blocks, uh, lots of hex hexies block <laughs> to do yet. And we'll be hand stitching uh, our applique pieces for that tonight, at least starting. So that is the plan. Uh, and we are going to do just something special tonight. Uh, anyone who orders any of our kits, uh, even clearance kits, whatever, will receive a mystery gift, a free mystery gift within, uh, if they order within the time that we're live here uh, tonight. So uh, no need for a code or anything. I will just look at the orders afterwards at who ordered in that time frame, and you'll get a free mystery gift. So uh, thanks in advance, you guys. So, all right, let's get going. All right, and here is our pretty tulip. We'll start there. Let me shimmy these guys out of the way. So we finished our tulip yesterday. Uh, so I'm gonna go down just a hair here. But what we did is we glued all of the edges. So this is all glued. Uh, it, it, it dries clear, so it's, it's hard to tell. But we glued all of the edges. And uh, so now we basically have a finished tulip rug here. And uh, I just love how it turned out, like all those little stitches. Ugh! I do kind of want to make another one. And <laughs> it's funny, my mom said I should turn it into a a toilet seat cover too. <laughs> I know someone mentioned that, mentioned that here. Uh, and uh, um, <laughs> now I want to make a toilet seat cover, which would be awesome. Uh, it is, it is too big for that. Uh, I'll have to compare it to an actual toilet seat cover uh, in a TikTok or something tomorrow. But now I totally want to make a toilet seat cover. <laughs> but the other thing that we finished uh, on Saturday in our live stitch along is our sunflower embroidery. Uh, so this, we took actually like, I don't know, I think we were working on this like two and a half hours, just finishing up all of, basically all of our uh, petals. Um, those are all the stem stitch and we really, <laughs> I mean, they take, they take time. So, uh, we really got, uh, that going and, and finished. So we have two projects done, which means we can start this week fresh. Uh, I'm going to scoot you guys down even more here. Uh, we can start with a fresh project and tonight it is going to be, uh, back to the splendid sampler to quilt, quilt along. Uh, so we've been working on this for a few years now, which sounds crazy. I can't believe uh, we're, we've been working on it that long. But we are on the locks, the Lot of Hexies block, and I think it was on page 84. So if you've been following along, uh, along with us here. So it's this block right here. Here's another colorway. And we are pretty far with it. So let's, let's get that out. I have it here. I don't want to move it around too much because... Uh, nothing's attached. So uh, if you remember, we made our English paper piece uh, hexagons. And now we're actually to the stage that we can pop these guys out of here, pop the papers out and uh, attach them to our piece here. And I can see we, st we have already divided our, uh, like we folded our fabric, our background fabric, uh, in quarters and on the diagonal so we can really place this like just where we want. I kind of want to place it so that they all meet in the middle. I think that would be kind of cool or get really close. Ooh, maybe that'd be too hard for me to accomplish. All right, so maybe we should just be like an eighth of an inch away from each line or like a sixteenth of an inch, <laughs> something, something like so. Uh, just just in case I don't stitch it 
just perfect. <laughs> That's probably a little bit better. So a little bit of some distance uh, in there. So, all right, let's get going on that tonight. And thanks again for coming, you guys. And if you're just coming in, uh, any kit purchase tonight, so any of our embroidery kits, whether it's the Embroidery of the Month or one of our smaller kits, this is the one that the um, the punch needle, our big our big rug here, is, is modeled after. We just blew it up um, 600%. But anyway, any any embroidery kit, even our uh, even our clearance kits, uh, you'll get a uh, any order of those tonight during our live. You'll get a free uh, mystery um, our mystery gift with it. So, all right, you guys, let's get going with this. Let's scooch scooch this feller out of the way here. Shoop. Okay. So I got uh, our little Zeb here. This is from um, Fish, wait, what is it called? Fish Museum and Circus? I'm not saying that first one right. Let me know, you guys. I keep forgetting her, her, her name every single time we come on here. I think Fish Museum and Cir Circus. It's the fish that throws me because of penguin and fish. Um, but anyway, so uh, I'm going to grab my Milner's needle. This one's so crooked, but I love him so much still. It is a Milner's needle or a straw needle, which is extra long. Uh, this one happens to be very thin. So I think it's like a size size 11 or, or something, but a very, very thin needle. And that's gonna help us. Actually, I'm gonna put it back for now. I wanna do some pressing, but that's how I'm gonna stitch this on. We need to um, pop out some pieces. So I just need to remember that I want the, I'm gonna take all this off now. So I need to remember that I want the, orangey piece towards the center. Okay, that's that's all I need to know right now. So I'm going to move all of these. I'm going to stitch them on one at a time. Uh, and I, I um, don't want the other pieces around while I do it. So before I stitch it on, we're just applicating these onto the background piece. But before I do that, I need to pop out the little papers. So I'm going to do that right before I start stitching with each one. But let's just give it a press. So this is our final. Oh, Paula says, yes, fish museum and circus. Like, yeah, every time I say it out loud, I feel like I'm messing it up. <laughs> and it, it is because of the fish, because our company is Penguin and Fish. So I always feel like, oh, wait, did I do that right? So, yep. Yep, Adrian and, and Paula said it. I know some of you guys have gotten gotten her her um, stoneware pieces or her little ceramic guys. And I just think they're so cute. Look at this dude. We named him Zeb because he's got, uh, he's got stripes like a, a zebra or a zebra. So cute little tail. But he holds my needles there. I have another one um, that we've named Phil, and he he holds uh, my pins. This is but this is my needle feller. All right, I have my stiletto here. Uh, you could use just um, a pin. You could use anything, but I like my stiletto. I, uh, if you remember, I punched holes into all of my English paper pieces. Uh, that's gonna come in handy now. So I think let's let's start in the middle. I'm gonna first we glued we glued basted this. So I'm just gonna run my stiletto underneath uh, underneath the fabric here just to kind of release that glue, just so that glue's not as tight on my 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 um, piece anymore my uh, template anymore. And then I'm gonna stick my, the, the tip of this into the hole that we punched. And I should be able to just pop this out. And there's a little, oops, just grabbing a scissors. There's a little uh, crossover where we, where we um, tied the thread. We can just snip those now. Oh, I, this is always makes me nervous. Let's see if we can get these guys out of here easily. Ooh, I must have glued down this side too. Come on, guy, you can do it. Oop. There, this is why I wanted to press it first as well, just to help retain that shape. Ooh, yeah, there we go. There we go. So first paper is out. And this is so nice because now it feels like fabric again. <laughs> and our corners and everything look, look good still. So all right, so far so good. Let's do this guy up here. But yeah, we glued down the backside on the fabric and that's kind of what was sticking here. 
So this is definitely one of those chill and relax sort of projects. I mean, we it took us a long time to get this far with these hexes all um, sewn together and everything. But I think with this splendid sampler project, I've learned to just kind of settle in. <laughs> settle in and let the project take however long it's going to take. I kind of feel like my knot's tying out here a little bit, though. Yeah, it is a little bit, huh? Well, luckily we're going to applicate it down soon, so none of that will matter anymore. Come on, guy, get out of there. But yeah, uh, the other way, you can go up in here and pick it out, but I think that's a little bit more difficult. It kind of distorts things a little bit more, even though that worked okay. But that's why I like having the hole in the middle. I think I'll probably squish this with the iron one more time before, before we stitch it on. But we're going to start with this guy and just go one at a time. Hi, Absolute Goblin and Sunflowers. Pam, nice to see you all pop in. So that was really fun for me to do that that live again on Saturday. It's I've, I've been liking doing those kind of marathon things. And we're just getting stuff done. Getting, getting all my little projects checked off the list, which makes me happy. <laughs> Love it. Okay, that last one seemed, oh yeah, this one seems easy enough too. There we go. All right, so there's our first group of hexes and they look like um, they're just nice fabric again. They're not stiff with all our templates in. So I'm just gonna give it one more press for good measure, I guess. We'll press it on this side to get all those folds in place again. And I think I might glue this to my piece uh, just to just to help myself out again. There, should I flip it this way too? Probably. Any of this glue will wash out with water and stuff too, so I'm not too concerned about that. All right, hey Noeline. Oh, Sharon said just placed an order. Yay! So Sharon will get um, Sharon will get a mystery gift for free. Uh, hold on, I'm looking for my glue. There we are. Uh, so uh, anyone today who uh, orders one of our kits, any any of our kits, will automatically get a free mystery gift added onto it. Um, you don't need a coupon or anything. I will just look at the orders afterwards and. Ugh. and uh, um, add one to your order. So thank you so much. How do you like your iron? Is it really hot? Gail, it is one of my top five favorite craft items that I own. <laughs> so Gail is asking about um, my iron here. It is cordless and that is life changing. I am telling you. So uh, if you want to screen grab it, uh, it's the Panasonic um, I mean, that's the real code there, but if you just, um, Google Panasonic 360 iron, cordless iron. So the 360, uh, means that it's got a, it's got a pointy end on both sides. So I can't actually set it up, um, like a normal iron, but it forces me to put it back in the base, which recharges it. It is super hot. It is just exactly like the heat of any other iron. Um, and it actually stays warm for quite a bit without going back in its base, but it's awesome. So my base is nearby, like the base is at the end of my table here, but, ooh, that's a lot. Um, but there's no cords getting in my way, right? So the base is plugged in, but the actual iron is not. So I can like bring it out here, do whatever I need to do for a while too. And uh, um, I don't have to return it to that base but when I when I when it's time to set it down I do return it to that base because it it doesn't have like that flat side but I think you can actually get them with that flat side too I just happen to have the 360 but top five um, favorite tools that I use and I would be so 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 sad if if it went away for sure I think that's my Kai scissors I really love a um, few other things but that would be probably the first thing. If you asked me what my top five things are, that would be probably number one on the list. I love it. 
Shirley says that iron is awesome. I wouldn't have any other kind. Yeah, I, I really, really over the moon do actually like it. <laughs> and like, you know, I can like a product and that sort of thing, but that really is a favorite. And I don't get anything for saying that. I just, I just really do think it's one of my favorite things. So I'm using my folds. Like I've already put folds on here um, on the diagonal and uh, horizontal. And I, I put some glue on here and I'm just going to try and be a little ways away. I'm just, it's a little hard to see because it's on white. A little hard for me to see too. Um, but I am just trying to center it on that diagonal. And I'm just going like a hair away from from the the corners or from the from the center line so the corners these tips aren't gonna quite meet but i think i'm doing that on purpose and you know what i might actually well let's 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 try sticking with the glue see if that works uh, i do have pins as well um so i can also like grab some pins to help me out here which is probably a smart idea because i will be handling this quite a bit uh, hey, Josephine. Josephine is asking, what am I making with these? So I am making a quilt. I should get out a little bit of it to show you guys. Uh, it is a quilt as you go quilt. <laughs> so, uh, uh, oh, it looks like I have uh, some pieces ready here to, to quilt as well. So we already have some pieces. Let me just get out a little bit more of it for you. Um, I've been assembling uh blocks so four blocks together and then been quilting it already and then we're going to assemble all of these in a quilt so this is from a project uh from this book called the splendid sampler 2. there are a hundred different quilt blocks by like around 80 different designers and uh, uh or like 80 to 90 different designers so i'm going one by one through all of these and uh, oh that's a lot of applique ones but there's a lot of pieced ones there's just all sorts of different styles of um, design embroidery english paper piecing all sorts um, and i am making a quilt oops here we go and i'm doing the quilt as you go method which means I am sewing those, I'm assembling them in that smaller size, and then I am putting them all together. So this is, this is a whole row of the quilt that's been already put together using the quilt as you go process. Uh, so the back is all done, the quilting is all done. Um, and we're, we're, we're well on our way with this project. It's been, it's been years <laughs> actually that we've been kind of working on it. Um, Oh, this, look at all the ones in, in this one. Look, we got some applique and embroidery and some, that's probably some uh, paper piecing right there and some combo blocks, applique and piecing. But yeah, so we're working our way through this whole quilt. And this is just one of those 100 blocks and each take their own time. And <laughs> it's all crazy town amount of time. Oh, Josephine says, that's awesome. I can't wait to see the finished project. Me? too. <laughs> it's like, it's, I mean, right now we're, we're pushing through it. I should do a, uh, oh, I need some thread. I should do a, uh, just a Saturday live stream on uh, um, just some of these. Maybe we can move some of these blocks, blocks along. Cause like this one, this is one is taking a while cause it's a lot of hand piecing, um, hand applique. But dang, it'd be nice. I think we're down to 27 left out of the 100. So <laughs> a ways yet. All right. So I got my thread here. This is just uh, some 50 weight sewing thread. This is Aurifil. Uh, I just happened to grab it next to me. I'm using a color that's close to the background fabric. I'm going to attempt to do this with just the glue and see how it goes. Otherwise, I do have applique pins. And I think I'm going to start right along this line here. That seems like the most important line that I want perfectly in its place and then we're literally gonna sew around each of these little little edges <laughs> one at a time and we got four of them and then we got more of then we got these guys too to go in the middle so we're gonna be here a while uh, and I probably won't finish this this month because we're probably only gonna work on this a few few um, days this week 
Oh, I won't be I won't be here Friday this week. John gets his knee surgery on Friday. Um at like super early in the morning, but we'll see how Friday goes. Uh so just maybe we'll maybe we'll work on this all all week this week, but still, we're we're not going to get done. Uh Cindy says I like your method of building the quilt. Oh yeah, that quilt as you go method is fabulous um that this is the first quilt that i've done that with too so this is my first attempt at quilt as you go although now we're also working on that alphabet embroidery quilt and i'm doing that quilt as you go now too after doing this one for a little bit but ugh, it's so nice especially on a home sewing machine because you only have to quilt these small pieces together you don't have to try and fit a whole gigongous quilt you know on your table all right let's give this a go i'm a little nervous but we'll see Josephine, Josephine says, uh, lots of time put into these, but the end results will be so rewarding. I, I, I it, it will for sure. My mom did this quilt too, and she's been done like for years, I feel like. Um, <laughs> I'm totally jealous. But we did do one other, this is the second quilt like this that we've done. I can't believe that I decided to do it again. Um, but we did a, a um, this is the Splendid Sampler 2. There was actually a book... Um, just called the Splendid Sampler, and uh, I got to design one of those blocks, so that's kind of how I got involved with it. I was asked to be one of the block designers, and uh, um, so then I'm like, ah, a second one came out, and I'm like, oh, let's let's just make that one too. <laughs> We've been doing that forever. Oh, Shirley says, ordered the peony kit. Yay, it's beautiful. Oh, I don't think I have that one out here. Oh, yeah, I do. Uh, so you'll get a free mystery gift as well. Uh, here we go. Here's our peony kit. This was, we just released special for basically Mother's Day. And we have some like greeting cards and stuff too. We have this one that says peony, but we have one that says mom. I don't think that one's in hand reach. Oh yeah, it is. I haven't quite cleaned up my mess from, here's the one that says mom. I haven't quite cleaned up the mess from uh, this weekend. So I just got like stuff piled in the corner over here. But awesome. So, uh, because Shirley ordered a kit. She'll get a free mystery um, mystery gift today, too. So I'm going to say it again. Uh, for today, if you're watching during our live and you get any kit, any one of our kits, even a clearance kit, uh, I will throw in one of our mystery, uh, our mystery bags, our mystery gifts. Um, you don't need a code or anything. I'm just going to like physically look at the orders during this time. And uh, if it's within the time that I'm on live here, uh, 8.30 to 9.30 p.m. Central Time, then I will just include one in your, in your order. All right, I, I'm already super relaxed, you guys. This is, uh, you know, I never, I always, this just seems like so tedious, this hand stitching before I start. But like the moment I start, I'm like, oh my God, this is good. Uh, <laughs> it, it's giving me that same feeling that like just crocheting and, and knitting do. I think I'm going to go through this point tw like twice though. But literally I, it, it, I'm just doing these little whip stitches here and it, it's so relaxing. <laughs> I, you know, in my, in my uh, mind, one of these days, oh God, I shouldn't tempt, shouldn't tempt fate. Um, one of these days, um, I'm gonna like just do like a whole giant quilt that's all, all little applique motifs like this, hand stitched, like some of those uh, quilts by Jap Japanese artists that have like all those little appliques to make like all these scenes. Oh my god, that, those have to take years and years, but they're so beautiful and I want to make one. Wouldn't that be like fun with the little tulips and everything else? I think it'd be fun. But that freaks me out at the same time. Like I don't want my brain to go there because I know, I know how big of a project that would be. Okay, and the moment I said that, then this, this became less reality, <laughs> less relaxing. <laughs> I don't think I need to go over that that um, point twice. I did that on that last one, but I don't know why I would need to do that. Oh, Amy says nails still look good. Yep, this is, uh, we're officially on a week two 
We have one full week under the belt with, with the nails. I've been keeping an eye on them. Uh, still really pleased <laughs> with how long this stuff lasts. This, I'm using a straw needle again here, just if you were wondering, I'm using a straw needle, which is a little bit longer. Mine just happens to be bent because it's so thin and I use it a lot. Um, but it's, I think it's a size 11, which is a pretty thin needle, but it's nice and sharp. But like this small skinny size really, um, it goes through all this fabric really, really well. All right, I'm gonna just do a little spot check because it seems like, you know, I'm in the air here a little bit. I just wanna make sure that I'm going in the right direction. And we are, okay, great. So it's really only being held right here. And I think I have like a little bit of glue there. Yeah, it's not really holding in the other places, but just that little bit of glue is keeping everything in line and it is it is flat yet i was thinking maybe i'd be bunching it up like this but it, it seems good so far so we're gonna keep going that's we got three sides done out of a zillion but you putz around and you work on these projects and then all of a sudden it's just done which is great i let me know if you guys remember this, but on the first Splendid Sampler quilt, we had that one with the hexagons that were even smaller than these hexagons. And like all those wreaths, I think there was like six different mini, it must have been like eight with eight pieces in each or something. Wait, it would have had to have been six, right? Six, because they're hexagons. Um, oh God, do you remember that though? That one took ages and ages and ages and ages but turned out so cool. I'm surprised at myself getting into all these quilts. <laughs> I, my mom started quilting in like 2001 or something. And, uh, uh and I just, you know, usually I would jump right onto crafts and stuff like that. But, but quilting took me a few years after she started to get into it. And it was because of like the marathon aspect to it. Like these are not quick projects. Um, even like short, like quick quilts are still, you know, you can embroider something faster than, than a quilt. Um, just like all the steps and everything. So they just didn't. Like I didn't, I couldn't get those quick wins, you know, I don't know. I must need a certain amount of dopamine during the day. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, so that's why I like embroidery because with, with the like little kits, you know, if you're just doing outlines and stuff, you can finish something really quickly and just have it be sweet and fun and, and all that. Whereas with, with a quilt, you're like digging down into it for a longer period of time. But I don't know if I think about it as like little, little sprints within the marathon, then you can still get those little wins along the way. And it really is satisfying once you've finished a whole, a whole quilt. I mean, it's crazy to like finish something with so much work put into it. I just think that's just so cool. Oh yeah, Amy, you're talking about the exact one, the exact one that I was just talking about. Amy said, remember the English paper piecing B1? Oh, B1, was it? Oh, okay, the English paper piecing B12 that had a small hexi flower. Oh yeah, no, that's a different one, that's right. Did I do that one yet? They both took forever. Was that in the first one? Oh God, like I, I can picture that, but just, it's hovering on the edge of me knowing what it looks like, but I, like I, I can feel it more. Like I know, I know I've either seen that or, or made it. Gosh, I don't remember that B one as much though. I remember the one, the hexes that had like a zillion, like it, it had like, I don't know how many, at least 60 hexagons in it. But that, yeah, B, it had a little, little hexagons in there. I remember that one being super cute. Oh, hello, my name is Alice, and sewing is magic. You can 
oh, you can do the same stitch a hundred times, and I'll still go, wow, how did they do that? Yup. Exactly. Exactly. What I like about embroidery and just sewing and quilting it, it is that too, that like every, you can, every person's stitches or every person's everything is just unique to, to them too, which is, which I find just interesting. Like you can give everyone the same project and uh, there's something about it that will be unique to them. And I think that to me, that's where the art is, right? Because it's those decisions that each person makes individually even as like how big do I make this stitch or whatever um, or what color all that I think is just where I get excited about that like that's where the art lives in those decisions and it is like magic <laughs> like this is all like magic that's actually what gets me excited about learning new crafts is that I have to like I have to know how they did it. And usually once I can, once I learn how, I can be like, okay, I, I like it or I hate it, but at least I know and I can move on or I dive in even more. Kind of like tatting. That was like, I had to figure out how that worked. That was just so, so interesting. And now I really love it. <laughs> got, got some projects started. I got it break those out again that'd be a fun uh long saturday uh too would be to do some tatting like tat one of those snowflakes from that snowflake book oh god i don't want to think about snowflakes i think it actually I, I thought i could hear some freezing rain a little bit today it was back in the 30s today you guys Ugh. had to go out to the post office and still went for a walk though so that was nice Oh, Amy says, I'm still going back to your Splendid Sampler 1 videos. So glad they're still there. Oh, good. That makes me happy. Hope they're still helpful. I feel like I've learned, I learned so much about, you know, all these different quilt everythings um, from that first Splendid Sampler project. So I feel like, I feel like now I can actually speak on all of these methods from experience and with some tips and tricks on the first go now. <laughs> Whereas I was learning learning on that. Ugh, we're almost, oh, I think we are just, just halfway done with, with this guy. Ooh, so we'll, I think we'll get this one done, but look how pretty it looks stitched on. I mean, it just melds into the fabric. Ugh, just love it. I'm so happy I, I learned how to do this um, needle turn applique. Actually, you know, we're totally cheating by like doing the, the, um, the fabric is tilted underneath or, or tucked underneath from the get go. But I just love that. I like, I like that like cheater technique for it. And ugh, it's just, it just melds into it. Like compared to when we were looking at it with it sitting on top, like it just becomes part of the fabric and it's like light years more interesting and better, I think. So it's just so fun. Like, you know, this is going to be the next step, but there's just something so special once it actually gets to that step. But yeah, I think um, with the time we have left, we'll be we'll be done with at least this one tonight. Oh, thanks. Hello, my name is Al. Oh, uh, hello, my name is Al. Is asking, is there a craft you've tried that made you go, "This is beyond me"? Sometimes I get intimidated. Uh, I kind of felt like that with this needle turn applique. Um, although doing it live, people had a lot of tips <laughs> that that helped me through. Um, let's see, what have I tried? Oh, you know, I, I did try, I have tried this since though, and I feel a little bit better about it, but spinning, um, this still feels a little bit beyond me for sure, but I tried, oh, what's it with the, with a drop spindle. So spinning yarn. So like with wool roving, uh, spinning it into yarn with a drop spindle, um, that one's rough still. Like I, I, I'm willing to try that one again, uh, but, but man, that that one's rough still. 
Uh, Lynn's, Lynn As Anderson's asking, is this similar to English paper piecing? It is exactly English paper piecing. So uh, what I'm doing now is I'm just, um, it's a combo. So I'm appliquing my English paper pieced pieces uh, to a backing fabric for this particular block. So, but the pieces are actually uh, English paper piecing. So I could actually stitch these together if I wanted to. So I don't need a backing fabric. Um, you know, it just happens that this block is designed to do it. But I have the pieces here and I could sew them together. And uh, if I took all the paper pieces out of this, I would have a uh, nice fabric. Um, of paper pieced things. But yes, yeah, so this is kind of a combo of paper piecing, English paper piecing, and um, applique. We've already done um, just, you know, little bits of, of English paper piecing, just these. And we got the little, um, our templates in there yet. We popped out the ones for the piece that I'm working on. Uh, and yep, yeah, now we're just appliquing, appliquing it. So this was not, not a total true English paper piecing project but it started out as as english paper piecing now now we've turned it into applique oh no problem i'll ask i mean ask any questions you want that's that's what i'm love more than anything about these lives is just getting to learn from each other and putz around here and chit chat Okay, I am being conscious as I do this to not like try and tuck accidentally like grab too much of this white, but that is why we did this on a seven inch um, back square instead of the six and a half. Six and a half is what it'll end up with, but I am feeling like I am kind of maybe getting too much here. I gotta just hold it in place and not scooch it around if I can. I might need more thread. I'm not sure I even paid attention to how much thread I got at the beginning. That was kind of dumb. Maybe we'll have enough. And for anyone popping in again, we're trying something new today, but uh, anyone who orders, I know we're not doing embroidery tonight, um, but we did over the weekend. Anyone who, order, who orders any of our embroidery kits, even from our clearance section, um, I will throw in one of our mystery gift, our little mystery gift pack uh, for free. And you don't need a code or anything. Just I will look at anyone um, who ordered during the time of this live. And because uh, there's times on, on the orders, I'll just look at that. And anyone who's ordered during our live uh, will get a bonus um, mystery gift um, pack for free. Here's my little promo for tonight. <laughs> All right. But it's the last um, last week of the month already, you guys. So um, last week for the, uh, the sunflower, um, that sunflower print to be free with the sunflower embroidery, our free gift for the month for our embroidery of the month. We'll still have the kit available. Um, after now, but the, the freebie won't be with it anymore. Ooh, Lynn says I've, uh, I've just started my first hexy English paper piecing piece, English EPP piece. <laughs> it's hard to say. I love the idea of backing like, like applique. Yeah. I mean, this is, this is a, a fun way to do it because you still get the you still get the feeling of English paper piecing, but um, you know I don't have to fill this whole space with English paper piece pieces. But I still get to have fun. I still get to like do the actual English paper piecing, like hand sewing all these little bits together. I still get to like fold it around the edges, so I still get that experience. But yeah, I can just kind of plop it on a backing. Although this isn't exactly fast. <laughs> I suppose you could machine sew this on too. You would just have like a little edge. I mean, you'd see the stitching. We could have done that here. Huh. Was I intending to do that? <laughs> Maybe I was intending to do that and I forgot. And now we're hand piecing it, hand stitching it. I don't remember. Okay, this little corner on this one got a little further out, but we're going to just leave it. But I am going to tack it down. I do really enjoy this hand stitching though. It just means that 
our block is going to even take longer to finish, but whatever. We're already this far in. We're years into this quilt. What's another <laughs> couple months, probably? I don't know. Oh, yeah, accidental on purpose. Yep, I'm accidentally on purpose. Uh, <laughs> sewing this by hand. Uh, does this hurt without a thimble? Um, it does not. I mean, I suppose if I did this all day long. Yeah, you know what? If I did this for like three hours long, it probably would. But I'm using a very thin, uh, very sharp Milner's or straw needle. And it is going through this um, several layers of fabric here really, really easily. Uh, it, it's different than hand quilting. So hand quilting, that feels like I would need the needle or the, the, the thimble. I'm thinking about that now because I have done some hand quilting. Oh, that's another one that uh, someone asked earlier, like, has any, has any craft kind of like threw me for a loop? Hand quilting, that one's pretty tough for me still, but I, I am practicing. Um, but that you definitely need a needle i know this this kind of looks like that um but i i don't or not a needle a thimble i don't really feel like i need a thimble for this and i think it is because i'm using this particular needle and i'm only going one stitch at a time uh with hand quilting i would try and get like several stitches so i'm, I'm pulling through more uh hello my name is l is asking is this piece of a larger project it is so i'll show that again uh we're working through the splendid sampler 2 book there is a hundred different quilt blocks and this is just one of the 100 <laughs> and all different styles but we have been uh, sewing it i have like 27 or so left i've been taking uh four of four blocks and I am quilting it together. Oop, let's not lose pieces. Uh, but I've been putting them together um, with a backing fabric and my batting. And then I have been quilting these smaller pieces. So I'm doing a quilt as you go method. So I, I'm quilting these smaller uh, sets of four. And then I am assembling them into uh, larger pieces. So this is like a whole row of the uh, like two rows of the quilt that has started with just like these smaller pieces and then i then i assemble those together so this is called a quilt as you go process and it's been awesome it's the first time that i've done quilt as you go and it's really been making the quilting part of this more manageable and even though i still have like 27 or so blocks to go i have all that done already so i have like all of that quilting done um pretty much which is just such a great feeling because that would have been a big part of this process. So larger project is is the quilt. Um, what size Milner's needle do you like for this, and what size do you favor for English paper piecing? So this is um, this is what I use for English paper piecing as well. Um, I think I think the English paper piecing is why it's bent and not the the applique. I think the applique was fine but you know I'm still using my my crazy bent needle I believe this is a size 11 Milner's or straw um straw needle uh, they can be called either I don't remember what brand this is uh, but I'm pretty sure it's like a size 11 which is pretty small or thin I mean so um I'm using a pretty thin Milner's needle and um oh I'm gonna have just enough thread yes uh it's it works great. Like I, I love it for, it's my favorite needle <laughs> for, for this sort of hand stitching. I use it for applique, like what I'm doing now. And I use it for the English paper piecing. Um, although I think that is what made it bend because I'm, I think I'm a little bit more aggressive when I'm sewing my, my pieces together, but it's so nice because of the thinness and the sharpness. It really just, you know, it's going through this like butter. I don't have to like, there's no stress or tension at all. And that would really change the game. If I, if I had to really pull this through or if it was tough, like a fat needle, um, a fatter needle would make like bigger holes and stuff and it'd be harder to pull the needle through. If I had to deal with all that, this would not be nearly as enjoyable. Oh, Lynn says I favor the, the thin ones too. Yeah, it's, it's going great. Oh, thanks, Lynn. Uh, do you machine or hand stitch the design stitch that looks like Oh, the fish scale. Oh, so I think that one, let's see that one again. 
Uh, this particular one was, I think, a little bit of a test for me. So here's the back. Uh, I got a uh, um, a template. I don't I don't have it within hands reach, but I did get a I did get a template that came with my uh, round uh, darning. My darning foot is perfectly round, so it's um, like a quarter inch from the edge, and so I I have a a template it must have been on this side so i'd go around the outside and i had to keep moving it so this is the first time i think using um that acrylic template with my foot so but that's kind of why it looks so nice i mean there's like little mistakes here and there i have since tried doing it by hand and been not even close to as as successful as this but yeah this was with a acrylic uh template and I used, um, I knew, I knew I wanted to just try an all over thing. So I actually used some really floofy, some floofy, um, batting for this. It might even be two layers of batting just cause I wanted it extra poofy. Um, I'm, I'm recycling batting <laughs> for this project too. So all of my little groupings have different amounts of, or different types of batting in it. So this, and I'm using old fabric that I happen to have too. I stole some from my mom, but um, this is like a slow motion recycling of my stash <laughs> project. Oh, your crochet hooks are all bent like that? For real? Oh my gosh. That's intense. That uh, crochet, I, I ordered one of those. God, what are they called again now? not fat boys, but something real close to that. <laughs> what are they called? Those handles from that person on, on TikTok. Oh gosh, whatever. I got uh, like an ergonomic kind of handle, like a big, big handle for my crochet hook. I've been trying to crochet uh, um, this, this uh, like a little blankie. And uh, it's just been rough on my wrists this time, like more than usual. All right, I'm done with this. I'm just going to tie this off in the back. But it's been like just a lot on my hands. I'm like, I'm going to, oh, a chunky boy. <laughs> Is that... Catherine says chunky boy. Yeah, so I got myself a chunky boy. It, it's hopefully in the mail. I don't know. Um, I haven't had a notification yet. But I, I want to try one of those out with my crochet hook. But dang, a bent crochet hook, that's pretty hardcore. I'm just trying to tie this in a little, little knot, but I'm not, I don't think I'm being that successful, but here we go. Um, I'm like looking for my needle minder because I've been so used to uh, using that um, the past few days. I will just stick you right back into Zeb there. All right. All right. So we had just a little bit of thread left. I got to pay more attention to that when I, when I cut the next one. Oh, you started with crochet, then cross stitch and hand stitching. Oh, that's exciting. I want to do more cross stitch. I, we've been actually, it's come up a few, like almost every time, you know, I've been on live lately, but I do want to uh, play with some cross stitch again. I really would like to um, do one of some of some of my flowers. I haven't designed it yet. Um, it's still on my to-do list, but it's, it's at the top of my mind. I, I still want to do that. So one of these, um, one of these evenings we're going to have to, do some cross stitch for sure. I haven't, I, I know somewhere in my craft stuff, craft supplies, I do have <laughs> some fabric. I just have to find it. I, I have that waste fabric though. I could use that. I think I have that like nearby here. I'd have to look through my bin. Um, but I did get some of that cross stitch waste fabric, which would be fun to use. I haven't used that yet. So that we could put on like my, my jean jacket. We could do or my jean shirt, we could do, uh, oh, I'm gonna leave this up. And I could do like a cross stitch onto the jean jacket with the waist fabric, that would be kind of fun. Oh, Nina says, can't wait to my, for my kit to come, yay! That's awesome. All right, we got our next piece to go. So the first guy's done, um, we do still have some time to at least get this started, I think. So I'm gonna, just gonna snip these little bits when we jump from one corner to the other again those are kind of annoying all right let's let's start at the top this time so i give it a, a just a press just to you know get those nice edges so, so hopefully this stay and uh, i am going to 
just scratch. Uh, I glued, I glue basted this, so it's being held by glue instead of thread. So I'm just gonna try and undo the glue by kind of getting underneath. Uh, I did punch a hole in my templates. Uh, that really helps pop them out. I mean, if you saw me at the beginning, though, I was struggling. It definitely works better when you've thread basted it. Then they just pop out like nothing. But since I glue basted it, it's being a little annoying. But it is nice to be able to just stick my... Oh, there we go. <laughs> pop right out. Flew right out. Uh, stick my um, stiletto in, the, in that center there to pop it out. So definitely recommend the uh, hole punch in your templates before... Before you do your English paper piecing. I love this part though. It does take some time, but I love when it feels like fabric again. That's what's so fun. Oh yeah, Amy says, don't forget to tell them it's my blonde quilt. Yep, we've been we've named this quilt. Oh yeah, that was the, that was the other parameter for me. I always want to learn something or or try an idea um, whenever I work on a project. And for for this quilt um, that we're doing, uh, one thing was the quilt as you go. I wanted to try the quilt as you go method out because um, I hadn't done that before. I'm just kind of shaping this again. I'll I'll press this again, but I don't want it to get too crazy before I press it. Um, but the other kind of parameter I gave for myself is working in all kind of light colors, uh, very light, like low contrast um, colors, since all of my things that I end up making ends up being like all these bright, juicy colors. And I'm like, can I even do subdued? <laughs> so this was my attempt at, at um, doing something a little lighter, a little more subdued. So I only, I'm only using these pale yellows and tans, just whatever I had. I was in, intending it for it to be tan, but I didn't have as much in my stash. So yellow came in and whenever there's a background, whenever there's a clear background, like an obvious background, I've been making it white and I have white in every single piece. And then like every background, when there is one, I've been doing white. So those are my design parameters for myself. Um, Oh, and then every like five blocks, I get to add like a teeny tiny pop of color. But I had a, I had to have my proportions uh, set for myself, set for myself up front. Otherwise, I knew I would have put a whole bo a bunch more color, and I was trying to hold back. Um, so, so it kind of turned out to be the blonde quilt. <laughs> is kind of what we've we've deemed it. Uh, which is fine with me. There we go. Last last piece. So you can you can reuse these. I mean, I've I made these with a postcard. Um, I mean, they're a little bent out of shape. They've got some glue on them, but literally, you know, if I was doing a huge project with a ton of these, I would totally reuse all of these, even the bent ones. I mean, like this one bent a little, but it is a postcard. It's it's got some heft to it. It's totally fine still. So you can keep these. Um, I don't know if I will because I don't I don't do a lot of these projects unless they're, you know have the templates all figured out different sizes and stuff all right so i'm just gonna give it a little press with let's talk about my iron earlier this is my favorite uh thing one of my favorite craft things that i own it is a cordless iron it's just as hot as any other iron it lasts a long time away from the base it is awesome uh the panasonic like 360 degree cordless iron ugh favoritest thing for sure it was like surprisingly it was just life-changing in crafty town that's for sure all right so we got our second one ready i don't know i'm thinking we go directly across and then we'll go these does that make sense or should i go like here do you think i guess it doesn't matter i don't know i'm kind of leaning for directly across i don't know why though Maybe because then we can center the other ones if, if these ones get off. All right, so I, I have those I have those um, folds that we put in here. I think we actually pressed them in here, which is probably a good idea. I'm going like a little bit away from it, and I am tacking, I'm tacking it down with glue. Uh, I could use pins. I have applique pins, but I hate poking myself. <laughs> so... We tested to see if the glue was um, good enough for, for um, to hold that in place while I stitched. 
and it seemed to work just fine. So I think I'll get a couple, try and get a few more spots on the way up here. I'm just gluing the seam allowance, not in the middle, because I, um, I want it to like lift up from the surface. Yet I don't want, I don't want it like squished down there. Even though that would go away. Like, see how these are all kind of lifted off the background? That's like the nice needle turn applique look um, that I'm going for here. And as long as I'm on the seam allowance and not the rest of the fabric, we should be fine. Okay, I'm a little. I don't know if I should move this over just a tish. I don't know if I can anymore after gluing it. This one actually looks a little crooked, <laughs> which I think was a, one of our problems since we, I just traced all, all these and I think one angle on all of them. Yeah, I can even see this angle is just a little up. So that's causing this curve a little bit. <laughs> but you know, that's what you get when you hand do stuff. All right, you guys, we have, uh, I'm going to start stitching this stitching this now although I don't know oh I know for sure we're I'm not gonna finish so we'll get it started that we have four more minutes but that means there's we're gonna do this thing again we have um, I'm doing a special tonight so anyone who buys any of our embroidery kits during this live um, so 8 30 p.m. to 9 30 p.m. central uh, anyone who orders any of our kits even the clearance ones will get a free um, mystery bag, um, mystery gift with it. And you don't need a coupon or anything. I'm just going to like manually look at whoever ordered during this time and they will get a mystery gift with their, with their kit order. So a few more minutes. Um, it won't be exactly 9:30. It'll be just like whenever, oh, let's tie a knot, whenever, whenever we're done here, which may be like a few minutes over, but um, so just a reminder for that. I might do more of more of that, more fun specials, um, different things while we're live. <laughs> just a dish. Uh, if you're here long enough, you all say all sorts of silly phrases like that. All right, we're gonna start at that little corner here. Oh gosh, I had a. <laughs> A wave of panic for a sec because uh, I forgot I, I didn't like pay close attention to, of if I put this in the right direction so I had like a moment of like oh my god did I rotate this the wrong way but no we got the two the two golds in the middle but geez I had a little moment of panic there oh Robin says I ordered Mother's Day yay that's awesome I I love how that that peony, um, peony embroidery turned out. Here's the peony, and we got the little, the little mom cards to go with it. I'm just loving, loving those two. I think we'll do some more cards. So we got a, a like a really nice printer um, to do our our kits, and I'm like, what else can I make that's fun with the printer? And so um, we tried those cards and they just turned out so like juicy and pretty and, and sweet. So uh, I think, I think I'll be doing some more greeting cards in the future. So if there's anything you want on a greeting card or whatever, or a kit or whatever, you know, we're doing a lot more kits, um, new designs and stuff too. Always, always want to know what you want for that stuff. A lot of our, um, a lot of our embroidery of the months, which just turned into our embroideries, but a lot of those are directly from suggestions from you guys, for sure. Ooh, I kind of feel like um, I should have gotten the thread conditioner out. I, I feel like this is going to get a little twisty on me. I think I took a little bit longer than what longer thread than what I was probably needing. Oh, that's sweet, Robin. All right, you know what I could do is just make my thread shorter. There we go. So, ooh, this isn't staying. Well, I guess it's working the same way. It's staying glued enough at the top. If that starts flopping around, though, I definitely want to um, 
glue that down again. I mean, you can see it's not glued at all in the middle, but that's how the that's how the other one was working. And as long as I just kind of held it onto it, it seemed fine. So after I get to this middle area, I'll, I'll like lay it flat again and see if it, see if it's all okay. Hey, Denise. Oh, thanks, Denise. Um, I will, um, as long as you order during this time, and, and I'll see it, I'll remember, um, as long as you ordered during this time that I'm live, which is right now, you're not on the replay or anything yet, um, and I know it's 9.30, but as long as I'm still live here, I will just add it to your kit. So you don't have to, or add it to your order, I mean. You don't have to um, do a coupon code or anything like that. I am just going to like manually look at who ordered during the time period that I'm on. And any of those people, so anyone, just to reiterate, anyone who orders any of our embroidery kits during this time that I'm live tonight, uh, which is going to be like, I don't know, a couple more minutes till I get sick of doing this, <laughs> uh, this applique here. Uh, anyone who orders during the live will, uh, a kit during the live will get a uh, free mystery gift in their order you don't need a coupon i'm just like literally gonna look at who ordered during this time period of me being live and i will add it i will mark it down and, and add it to your order and even if it comes in like if you know if you're not done checking out or whatever by the time i leave i'll you know still honor it <laughs> Catherine said, sayings, isn't there a, an illicit dictionary? Yeah, I know. We we have a dictionary going <laughs> of all the, like, silly things I say, I guess. We need a sound effects dictionary. We got some sound effects here. Oh, <laughs> Nolene says, noted and added the grippy thing. <laughs> yep. Oh, and on that, on the, um, gosh, what is it called again now? A chunky boy. Wait, a chunky boy? chunky boy <laughs> I think that's what it is those uh large um crochet hook grips um chunky boy uh sold by uh someone here on tiktok I forget who but anyway I ordered one of those so I'll have to do an unboxing when it comes in and I'll I'll show you the project that I'm crocheting and and we'll unbox it and give it a try uh, I, I've been wanting to show you guys just you know, I'm doing something ergonomically not great with my crochet, so I'd love to show you guys how I crochet and get some advice <laughs> from all you pro crocheters. Uh, so once that grippy guy comes in, the chunky boy, um, that handle, that ergonomic handle thing, I'll I'll do a box opening and I'll show you like the two-ish ways that I um, kind of crochet now. And my brother crochets differently, and I can I can try crocheting like how he does, but that really doesn't feel right in my hands. I would take a lot of practice to crochet like him. But anyway, I'll show you the two ways I do it, just to see if you guys have any advice, and then I'll give it a go on the chunky boy. And uh, yeah, I'm really excited for that. I, I didn't get any notification of it coming or anything yet, but I just ordered it, I think over the weekend or I don't know, Thursday or something. Uh-oh. Got a little knot, but it came out right away. Okay. I think I'm going to go tonight till I get up to here because I'm a little nervous about this glue staying. So we'll go up to this corner there, and then we'll we'll stop for the night. So there's a few more minutes <laughs> uh, to get the, the free mystery gift uh, during the live here when you order a kit. Uh, Denise says, okay, just order through PayPal. Oh, thank you. Yay. I'm, thanks so much, Denise. Yeah, so uh, so it will, um, I will definitely add a fun little something, something to, to your order. A mystery, free mystery gift. I like to make them all different and switch them up and just put all fun stuffs in those. Right, why did I just like I started stitching this? Why am I sending it down there? Oh, I think I wanted to see if it was still laying relatively flat and pick it up again. So now I kind of got this one gripped to where it's good. I'm glad I'm using this light color thread because I am kind of going into these into these um, blocks a little bit more than I usually do. Usually I just try and grab like a little bit of an edge, but 
think it's just late. I'm getting lazy. Which is actually the opposite of usually what happens. Usually when I when it gets late here, I um, it gets I get like more in perfectionist mode. But for some reason, I don't know. I'm extra chill tonight. <laughs> We're letting it be only eighty percent good, not not perfect. So, but yeah, I do want to just get up to the top here because I'm scared that that glue is gonna go away. I think if I knew this was gonna sit around forever, uh, I would probably pin it because I don't think I would trust the glue for that long. But I'm really actually kind of happy with our progress. I mean, we almost have two of these done. Um, you know, good one and a half. So I don't know, maybe we can finish putting the these long boys on um, tomorrow, Ugh, maybe. Uh, and then maybe we'll just go, maybe we'll just go work on this this week. I think now I'm confident that maybe by Thursday we could actually finish this. I um. I uh, um, wasn't thinking that we'd get this all done by Thursday, so I'm like, eh, maybe we'll save some for next month. But now I'm thinking, dang, we could do this. This would be awesome. Because then next month when we work on this, um, next month we could do some of that quilting because I have those four, or I have two sets of four already to quilt. It would be fun to do some quilting again. And then if I have everything sitting out uh, ready to quilt, I have the granny square quilt that we could maybe do a little stitch along on, like a marathon stitch along, get some borders done on, on that thing, get that project moved around. Oh, Denise says, I love your mystery gifts. I've had two of them already. Yay! Ugh, that makes me happy. Eee, thanks so much, Denise. Oh, you're sewing Hexies tonight, too. It's a Hexies, uh, Hexies evening. Someone else was um, just starting an English paper piecing project, too. All right, I am going to go up to this point right here. Um, and I'm going to call it a night here. So if you started an order for a kit because you want the that like free mystery gift, I will... Um, you know, I will honor it through, uh, you know, if you check out, if you're in like the checkout now sort of thing. Because um, I'm going to head off soon here. And uh, thank you guys again for your kit orders. You are very generous and lovely. <laughs> All right. So tomorrow we're going to go around this edge here. I think this is going to be, I'm going to just let this sit here and it'll be just fine. Uh, tonight and then tomorrow we'll try and fit these little dudes in uh, we have to take the paper backings off and then we still have all of these guys so this is going to be you know we're not going to be working on these tomorrow for sure but dang look at our progress it looks so good I think it was it was a good idea going opposites first I suppose it didn't really matter but it's going to just help us like center these next bits <laughs> it's not going to be centered these are already crazy looking but whatever <laughs> it's looking great though i am loving it all right you guys thank you so much again for joining me for this project the splendid sampler too man we're cruising through it but we're 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 getting there <laughs> uh, i i really am uh enjoying it man the moment you start doing that needle turn applique you start those hand stitches it's just like oh Oh, this is nice. So <laughs> I'm, I'm happily surprised at that tonight. It's always like, oh, this is just going to be a lot of, this is going to take forever. But then you start and then it's just nice. <laughs> so thanks again for joining me, you guys. And uh, thanks for the, the kit orders. I will get your mystery uh, gifts put in there. Again, it's, you know, it's not going to be on your invoice or anything like that. I'm just going to add them to anyone who ordered during this time period. Uh, so thank you guys again. Uh, I will uh, see you tomorrow then. Have a lovely, lovely evening, and I'll be back here again at 8.30 p.m. Central. Good night.